Welcome back to another episode of the Drainage Waste Vent series by the Building Expert team. Today we are roughing a third floor bathroom, complete with a toilet, two sinks and a bathtub. For this project, we are using ABS pipes and fittings. ABS is the most commonly used material in our area. Another commonly used material is cast iron. PVC is not common here at all. However, all the roughing techniques stay the same for any kind of plastic materials. Of course, they are a bit different for cast iron. We will use two 3 by 2 inch Y's. The first Y will serve as a drain for one of the sinks upstairs. It will also serve as a wet vent for the toilet. And the second Y will serve as a drain for the second sink and shower. Shower drain will be wet vented through the second sink drain. Our typical starting point is the toilet. Why? Because the toilet flange is already secured in place, eliminating the need to worry about strapping pipes to the ceiling. However, even when starting from the toilet, there is a limit. If you glue a long enough piece of pipe to the horizontal side of the 90 degree fitting, it will sag with its own weight. So if you begin with a lengthy piece from the toilet 90, Ensure to strap the other end before gluing anything. Otherwise, the pipe may dry sag. And when you strap it later, it could stress the joint. I think any piece of pipe over a foot should be strapped before gluing. In this video, we used a street 90 and glued the Y onto the fitting end. I didn't worry about strapping it to the ceiling because the length of the horizontal run from my toilet 90 to the stack 90 is short enough that all of my pieces are close together and nothing is sagging. Typically, I avoid using close pieces because if a leak occurs, you will have to cut out a fitting. And even then, there might not be enough space for a ram bit, resulting in the need to redo everything. So always try to use longer pieces if you have the option. We are using a 2916 carbide hole saw to make holes in the TGI webbing for 2 inch pipes. You can see that I angled one of the holes a little once the holes were done. This allows for a longer piece to fit between two TGIs, reducing the need for couplings. Couplings aren't necessarily bad or expensive, but they add more joints which means more chances of leaks and more time spent. These TGIs are running parallel to each other. Although they are not parallel to the outside wall where our sinks are located upstairs. So we marked our holes in a way that the pipes from the Ys will run parallel to the TGIs and create a perfect 90 degree angle with the perpendicular pipe. This ensures that the pipe will penetrate all the way inside the fitting hub, minimizing stress and chances of leaks. To confirm that our pipe is perfectly parallel, we made sure that each end of the parallel pipe is at the same distance from the TGI webbing. This not only looks good, but also ensures that there is no stress at any joint.
when we rough in, we almost never dry fit. The reason for that is when you dry fit a pipe, it doesn't go all the way inside the fitting hub. And there are chances that you will forget to glue a joint. We were taught never to dry fit. And that's how we teach our apprentices. Once you learn the right techniques to measure, you will find that it's way faster and minimizes waste by miles. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about dry fitting a pipe. We talked about strapping a horizontal piece before gluing. You can see that I did exactly what I meant on this top trap arm pipe. I put one side of the pipe into the Y hub and strapped the other side, making sure I have an adequate 2% or quarter inch per foot slope before I glued it into the Y. Lastly, I sported all the horizontal runs every 4 feet to ensure they won't sag under the drainage load or over time. I could have done it as we went along, but I only did necessary strapping initially. I left it until the end, so I could do it all at once. I find that doing repetitive tasks together boosts productivity and allows us to accomplish more. While strapping, I made sure that each pipe is perfectly sloped once again, so that we won't have any drainage issues in the future. That's all for this video. In the next episode, you will watch us finishing the venting of this bathroom and penetrating the vent through the roof. Stay tuned. And I request all the professional folks to drop comments so that we all can learn something new from each other. Anyone can ask questions and try answering to solve each other's issues. I will put links to all the tools we used in the description below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.